listening to KX93.5, Laguna's only FM radio station. I'm Scott Hayes, and this is The Friendship Show. And in the studio this morning, we have uh, Anna and Danny Mendez. Daniel was one of the most amazing people I have ever had the privilege of knowing. He right. was my son, and he was our pride and joy. He was funny. He was kind. He was engaged. He never, ever showed deep signs of depression. Right. Um, he was polite. Daniel was a straight-A student. He was a black belt in Taekwondo. He was taking karate. He played football. Football was his passion. Um, he just lit up the room when he walked in. We, he, he was just everything in the world to us. The sun rose and set over that boy. Yet there was something that was going on in his life, I guess starting back to junior high school, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of sort of how his peers were treating him. Mm -hmm. When did you get a sense or did you ever have a sense that there was that sort of problem in Daniel's life? We did have a sense, and that's one of our biggest sources of guilt, mm -hmm. is that we knew about the bullying. Mm -hmm. We ourselves weren't educated about the serious ramifications of bullying. Mm -hmm. We thought he would just get over it because he had so much else going for him that we thought this is just a stage that will pass him by. It first started, we first started seeing signs in elementary school mm -hmm. as early as then. But it really, really took hold when he went to middle school. I always said that middle school really kicked Daniel in the teeth. Right. And so when you say take hold, um, did he come home and define for you or describe for you what was happening at school? Is that how you sort of became aware of the situation? Yes. He was crying. Mm -hmm. He would come home crying in tears. Right. And he would tell us that kids were picking on him. Mm -hmm. They were calling him names. A lot of it was socioeconomic and racial in, in nature. When you say socioeconomic, what do you mean in, in racial? What do you um, mean by that? Well, he would, they, he would be called things like um, wet back, spick, greaser. Mm -hmm. um, nobody would care if you died. But I, I don't want to premise it. It wasn't just the white kids that right. called him those names. Mm -hmm. I'm Italian and my husband is Mexican. Mm -hmm. So he got it also from the Mexican kids where mm -hmm. they would call him half breed, mm -hmm. Mexican wannabe. Mm -hmm. You live in that neighborhood. You're not a real Mexican. Right. So he was very torn. And Danny did, as a father, would you offer advice to him in terms of how to deal with the problems at school? And if you did, what sort of advice would you offer? Well, the, the thing is, it, it, when it, as Anna was saying, it really started to um, stick its ugly head out in middle school. Right. And in middle school, he came to us one day and he said, they're, you know, they're picking on me and what do you think? Uh, and uh, we said, well, uh, you know, maybe you should, you know, report it. And he said, yes, th that's what exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to report it. There's a, you know, a mechanism at school, a procedure you go through to report something. And uh, he did. He did, went in and took care, took care of it himself. And we were very uh, proud of him for doing that. Right. And, and then, uh, but then what happened is the repercussions from that is then that's when the kids started picking on him even more. Uh -huh. because uh, they were angry with him for doing that mm -hmm. and then it just got worse right and the, and the thing is with Daniel he was he was really a very kind-hearted person mm -hmm. he um, I mean even though he was a black belt in, in mm -hmm. Taekwondo uh, and he was studying martial arts even at the time um, and and but he he never wanted to hurt anybody right he, he just didn't want to fight with people yeah, because based on, you know, the Taekwondo, which is a pretty powerful martial arts uh, football player, he didn't sound like the type of kid who would be picked on. Right. And so it just, it, it's kind of hard for people to wrap their head around that concept. Well, and that, Scott, is one of the things that we really try to educate parents on um, when it comes through our foundation that we started in his memory, the National Association of People Against Bullying is that there really is no profile. Mm -hmm. People continue to try to profile the kids that will be bullied, and it's not possible. Mm -hmm. Bullying is not a class issue. It affects kids of all races, color, creed, right. national origin, or sexual orientation. Right. It affects all of them. And so in da Daniel's case, the problem became uh, much more severe as he entered high school, freshman, sophomore year. And did you have a sense that the, the problem had escalated? 
At that point, Daniel started becoming very quiet about it because, okay. and, and it wasn't verbal, it wasn't verbal exclusively, it was also physical bullying. He would get shoved up against lockers, he was being thrown into trash cans. Um, and I stress that only because there's a segment of the population that believes verbal bullying really isn't harassment. Mm -hmm. It can be one of the most damaging psychologically. Daniel was experiencing both. Mm -hmm. But what studies show is that kids in middle school and elementary school, only 30% when they were surveyed believed that there was no system in place that could help them when it came to bullying. When they got to high school, it was over 60%. So the kids, as they grow older, they lose faith in the system. Right. And Daniel had told me one day, Mom, you convinced me to report the bullying, and it was the biggest mistake of my life. This was back in junior high school. This now. was back in high school. Or in high school. Even. And we, so we sensed things were still happening in high school, right. but he did not want us to know about it, and he begged his friends not to tell us about it. And so the depth of his anguish became much more severe. He was seeing a therapist f for a year or two prior to his sophomore year. Yes. This was uh, 2009, I believe. He died in 2009. Yeah, and he died year. taking his own life. Yes. And he grabbed a gun, walked. Uh, I don't know the story exactly, but walked out to a neighbor's yard. It was my yeah. my husband and I had just um, left to go to Palm Springs. My mom was with the kids. Right. She had just picked Daniel up from school. What we didn't know was the, that he had had a very bad final altercation that day. Our son's autopsy showed cuts and bruising on his face and body. She Cuts and bruise, bruising from from the final the fight that there had was occurred. a fight at school there was or a, someplace nearby there was a fight at school gotcha he went home he broke into the gun cabinet took the gun got into his car that he had only had a learner's permit and daniel never broke any rules right he got into his car and drove to a friend's house parked the car got out and shot himself in the middle of the street on a sunny Friday afternoon mm -hmm. in beautiful San Clemente. Wow. Where were you when you heard the news? Did you get a phone call from somebody? We got a phone call from my mom who realized he was gone and something was wrong. We had just gotten to the hotel and he and Danny and I packed up right away and started the long drive back. We called the police and the police said, just get back right away. We knew there was something they were hiding. Um, they already knew at that point he had already died and I knew I sensed the moment that he died it's it's in my book right. as a mother you know when your child has died mm -hmm. um, but the whole drive back was excruciating and when we got back we learned that right. we no longer had a child that was alive had there been any indications at all that he was suicidal and the reason I asked that is doing my research I know that he was seeing a therapist and I think it was the day or two before he had written an email to his therapist. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, would you be okay if I read just a small portion of, of that? Of course, please. Um, this is what Daniel wrote in an email to his therapist uh, about the situation. Um, I hate to admit this, but I'm a weak little piece of the S word. I can't fight for the S word. I finally learned to admit it. People talk to me and mess with me because they know I won't do anything about it. I should just kill myself before I have to put up with all the failure that I know is coming for me. Life is too hard for me. I can't do anything and everybody, including God, laughs at me. When I die, which had better be really effing soon, they should put on my tombstone. Here lies Dan Mendez. There was never a significant amount of people who gave a blank about me. Danny, um... Why your son? Why do you think this bullying became so problematic for him? Football player, black belt in Taekwondo. What was it about his personality that didn't allow him the mechanism to cope with the situation? Well, I, I think it was just clearly that he was just a very uh, kind-hearted person and he, he did not want to fight people. I right. mean, and uh, quite honestly, uh, there were times um, that you know we talked about uh, different things, and uh, you know I even told him sometimes you know fighting is not the answer. I mean that's what you know. I mean uh, we don't want the kids fighting all the time, right? So, 
and uh, he was, uh, you know, very focused on that, and just did, did, he didn't want that, did not want to fight people. Right. Um, also in the studio this morning, we have Victoria, who is Daniel's sister, right? Yeah. Good morning, young lady. <laughs> morning. And you were in junior high school back in 2009. Yeah, I was in sixth grade. In sixth grade, and. I asked you outside, I'll ask you here in the studio, did you have any sense that your brother was experiencing this sort of anguish uh, from the bullying he was receiving at school? No, um, I really didn't know anything about the bullying. Um, he was always just ha really happy and um, just like funny at home and just always making jokes and like laughing. And so like when he took his life, I was like completely shocked because from what I saw, his life was perfect. Yeah, even in high school, when he entered high school, freshman, sophomore year, you didn't see a change in him that you noticed anything different, right? No, not really. Yeah. And then Brendan, uh, can you get on the microphone, my friend? This is Brendan Kim. Do I have that right, Brendan? Yeah, that's correct. And you were his best friend? Yes. In high school and junior high school? Yes. So you guys grew up together? Basically, yeah. And did you play football? Did you practice martial arts with him? Any of that? Mm, no. Um, he had his own life. He did those kind of stuff. But uh -huh. we would uh, we'd be the kind of friends that we'd hang out at school. And then whenever he was done with his, you know, taekwondo or football, we'd hang out and skateboard and just to skate till the, there's no sunlight left. Yeah, what sort of person was he as a friend, do you think? A guy that would just always be dependable. He was always there. He'd be the kind of friend that would go to you if you couldn't go to him. Most right. of the time he'd like to come down come down more than me go up. So, uh -huh. yeah, he's just the guy that was always there for you. So you guys were, would you say you guys were best friends? Yes. Uh huh. And did you have any sense uh, that this was going on in his life as his best friend? He may not necessarily come to his parents. He may not necessarily come to his younger sister, right. but sometimes best friends share things that they don't share with others. Right, yeah, well, that's actually how we connected. Um, um, I was the new kid at school in Bernice Air, and he was actually one of the first people that talked to me. San Clemente High School? No, actually at Bernice Air Middle School. I'm sorry, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I was around sixth grade. I was, I, I think I came in second semester. Mm -hmm. You know, the new kid on, the new kid in San Clemente and not really fitting in, he, I guess we just attracted towards each other. Right. And, you know, we went through a lot of stuff together. We were picked on a lot, and then throughout the years, we just, I guess, I dealt with it more. Um, I just got over it kind of stuff. I grew out of it. Well, let me ask you, let me back up here. You were both picked on? Yes. And why were you picked on? Well, being a 5'6 and 250 pounds, being a pretty big little kid. Okay, well, let's back up. You're, you're not 5'6 anymore. No, not How tall are you now? About 6'4. You're about 6'4, so yeah. you probably wouldn't have been bullied if you were been that mm. tall. No. Yeah. And so you were both picked on for the sort of being small in stature? S well, it was, we were small in stature. We weren't, you know, we weren't, we didn't fit. We're different races. I'm Korean. He's Mexican and Italian. Okay. And, then, you know, I don't want to bring race into this, no. but, you know, we don't really fit in as, you know, just a demographic in San Clemente. Right. It's just facts. But um, And so in high school, did that change or did that get worse? In high school, for me, it changed a lot. I, you know, I grew. I got taller, you know, for some reason, just being the size that you are, that for some that makes a difference. I don't know why, but right. it does. But for Daniel, he did his football thing. I did wrestling my freshman year, and then I got into lacrosse. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we did our own things. We still hung out after school. You know, um, his grandma used to take me home from school when, before we could drive. Mm -hmm. And we still hung out a lot. But So he what would he share with you about being bullied? Well, basically what would happen is that he'd ask me like is there something wrong with me is is there something is there a weird way that I talk is there a weird, weird way that I walk and I would just tell him no mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about and I noticed more and more like I remember one time I was walking with him and I'm not gonna say his name but there's this guy that basically yelled at him called him some foul names like you know like what you would call someone that's Mexican or not white right and I just asked him to do what's the deal like he didn't even respond he just put his head down and kept on walking and he didn't he honestly wouldn't even bring it up and then I remember, I think it was late freshman year, he talked to me about stuff, and he would never mention anyone's names, because, you know, we were best friends, you knew, I honestly didn't care if I had, I know this sounds weird, or anything, but at freshman high school, you get hot-headed, your hormones are going, like, yeah. I was ready to really hurt somebody, like, right. I was really pissed off that my friend was being picked on, Sure. and he would never bring up anyone's names, he mm. would just talk to me about it, and honestly, when this happened, everything seemed like it was all, all better, right. honestly, like, freshman year was pretty bad i remember sophomore year it was getting a lot better we were going a lot uh, going out a lot more with new people right. hanging out with new people and it seemed like all of it was over so what do you suppose might have changed this was uh, may 2009 yes. have, when when he took his life what do you suppose might have changed uh, around that time that made him take such drastic measures and did he talk to you about those changes 
Well, I know for a fact about like three months before he did mention somebody that was in his Spanish class mm -hmm. that started picking on him and I thought that was over. But what I what I honestly had com come to the conclusion of is that as bad as it was, it was starting to get better. He didn't think it would ever go back to how it was before. Right. And he saw a little glimpse of what it was before and he didn't want to go back to it because I just remember the last, honestly, like six, six months he was alive. Life was great. We hung out nonstop. We went out. You know, there was no, not nobody was picking on him, and right. then all of a sudden, this this kid just decided to really just be on his tails and just reminded him of what he didn't want. Where were you when you heard the news that he had taken his own life? Um, oh, it was it, it was actually really it was unreal. It was unreal. It was my uh, last lacrosse game of the year. You know, we it was our final game. We were, uh, I was going home. I was ecstatic. We we just poured the Gatorade over our coach and everything. It was an mm -hmm. exciting time. Right. And my stepdad picked me up. You know, it was really weird. Like, you know, he, my dad never picked me up from a lacrosse game before. I'm like, this is really weird. And I thought it was just because my last game. And he's just telling me, he's like, yeah, I'm so happy for you. But there was just something weird, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I just felt like something was off. Mm -hmm. We started driving towards my house and there's police cars going everywhere. I'm just like, what's going on? And he, he's just like telling me, he's like, hey, look, you just got to be prepared what's going to happen. I'm like, what are you talking about? And mm -hmm. then I see Daniel's car. But at this time, Daniel... Um, before Daniel drove that car down, he had a sticker on his car that had a Raiders, Oakland Raiders sticker on it. And I went over to it and I'm like, that's not his car. I just was in complete denial. The police right. officer says like, that's his car. I'm mm -hmm. like, that's not his car. There's no sticker on it. There's yeah. no way. And when, when I saw the ambulance and everything, this is unreal. I honestly called his number for about two days straight. I just, I kept on leaving messages like, dude, you better be effing with me because right. you better be driving off somewhere like San Francisco or something. Right. And you know, it, it didn't hit till a couple of days later, but when I found out, it was just nobody's prepared for that. Anna, let me ask you a question, if I may, and that is, after his suicide, when did you put together that it was a result of bullying? Within days of Daniel's death, mm -hmm. I think he had only been gone a couple of days, we had a neighbor that came to the house mm -hmm. and brought a, a, a girl mm -hmm. that went to school with Daniel. Um, and kids just started coming to our house that soon afterward telling us he was being bullied wow. he died because of bullying and I it, it was the the biggest failure on my part because when I heard that word bullying mm -hmm. I had known about it I had known about it for years mm -hmm. and I felt like it had still been there present right up until the very end mm -hmm. and I had not handled it right so the kids, the kids knew about it, and they started telling us within days of his death. Okay. Brendan, as a result of this, you uh, started or launched a club at the high school? Yes. Um, what happened was uh, there was a group of us. It was uh, Lizzie, Jacob, uh, Mitch, Jason. I'm sorry if I forget names. but That's okay. Um, yeah, we, weren't the, we went to the principal's office. You know, we started a club, but I want to really... It's titled Cool to be Kind? Yes, or? Cool to be Kind. It's okay. C2BK. So cool to be kind. What does it do? What's its organizational goals, platforms? Well, the, uh, what's the purpose? The biggest thing here is just to show like an open door policy. I know like, you know, show awareness and everything. Right. Be like, you know, really feel like you're not alone because everybody's been picked on. I don't care if you're 18, Sally, or like 85 grandpa. Right. You remember the people that picked on you when you were little. Right. Like, it's just how it is but a lot of people think that they were alone in it you know everyone's mm -hmm. just like you know I, I don't want to talk about all that kind of stuff but the what we we established is hey guys look it's not okay for you to be picked on mm -hmm. you, we can hang out like there are people out there that want to be there for you that actually enjoy your company right and we've established that in san clemente you know we have cool to be kind of they've, they've, it's been there for what now six four five years now right and you know it was a rough start obviously with everything going on and a lot of us didn't know what we were doing mm -hmm. we were handed a baton of of extraordinary really responsibilities yeah. and we're at a young age but now it's just we understand that look guys there are other people that have going are going through what you're going through mm -hmm. and it's going to be okay mm -hmm. like what's happening to you isn't okay but it's going to be okay yeah so <coughs> excuse me victoria you've sort of carried the torch yes on the club you're a junior over at san clemente high school yes and president now of the club yes i took over my sophomore year and what would you say are the goals for 2014 in relationship to the club itself um, well, our goals are that, um, well, every year we have Blue Ribbon Week, which is, um, it's like a national anti-bullying week. And um, during Blue Ribbon Week, we go and we outreach to local, like, middle schools and elementary schools. And so, like, we'll go to those middle and elementary schools and, like, have put on assemblies for them and teach them, like, this is what bullying is and, like, 
this is why it's not okay and if you're being bullied then like and we just talk to them about it and i think that really has a big impact on them because mm -hmm. they um are hearing it from high schoolers and not just i don't know like yeah. one of their teachers or i know you launched an organization national association of people against bullying um can you talk to me a little bit about sort of this association and sort of your goals for this? Yes, the association's website is napab.org, N-A-P-A-B.org, for anybody that needs our help. And it's a nonprofit, so it's, our services are free of charge. Um, and one of the things that we are lobbying for, as well as Cool to Be Kind, yeah. is lobbying for our changes in legislation. It's very simple, Scott. Mm -hmm. Basically, kids today need the same rights of protection on the school grounds that adults have in the workplace. If you're an adult and you go to work and you get accosted, right. or you get beaten up, or you get thrown in a trash can, mm -hmm. or you're called some racial slur, there are re there's a re the repercussions. Yeah that occur. Kids today don't have those protections and that's all we're asking. We get all wrapped up in the definition of bullying and should it consider intent or no. We have those definitions in the workplace. Yep. Let's give our kids the same protection. Well, that's, that's an excellent point actually and have you reached out to any of your local uh, senators or we have. And, and what's the response you're getting, and, and what's the progress? Well, the, the senators, we've reached out to a couple of the senators um, last year, and we're planning a big legislative push this year. That's okay. going to be one of the goals of Cool to Be Kind, mm -hmm. to change legislation. Many people say legislation, there's enough legislation on the books, mm -hmm. yet what we went to court, our attorneys were saying, we have nothing to enforce. Right. There are no laws that really require that schools take action against it. Mm -hmm. And because the bullies are minors, they have even more protection than an adult in the workplace. Did the community of San Clemente come to your support? And I don't know if you have faith or not, but I was curious if faith helped through the healing process. We do, and, and Daniel as well. Daniel, ha, um, we are all very religious and God God fearing people right. and Daniel had just celebrated his confirmation in Christ one month before he died mm. so absolutely I'm not sure how people that don't believe in a higher being mm. get through a tragedy like we've gone through we have to believe that there's a higher purpose right and did the community come to your support did you found the San Clemente was behind it's you? it's interesting a ton of people reached out to us mm -hmm. the, the only reason why we were able to do what we did and put together our foundation and even um, filed the lawsuit was because there were so many parents that came to us and said we have to do this and mm -hmm. we know you're not strong but we'll be there to prop you up and help you along the way yeah uh, Danny um, to the fathers who are listening whose sons or daughters may be going through similar experiences um, what advice would you offer them um, to help their children through this well, <clears throat> I think the most important thing is communication. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to reach out to your kids. You mm -hmm. have to be observant. Uh, I mean, when the, on the the day that the day that Daniel died, mm -hmm. there was something going on there that morning that we could tell. Mm -hmm. uh, and you sort of have to read between the lines. If something doesn't seem right, mm -hmm. or your kids are acting a little bit out of the ordinary there's a reason behind it mm -hmm. and you kind of have to dig sometimes to get to those reasons mm -hmm. and you have to ask them sit down tell me what's going on what might you have done differently knowing what you know today if you had known it earlier in the process what might you have done differently oh gosh there's you know there's just so so many things yeah. uh, as parents that, that you, you kind know, of reevaluate and reassess. And that you could have done differently. If I can say, yeah. we could have taken bullying more seriously. And okay. one of, you know, the, the differences between a father and a mother, mm -hmm. and I think Danny will tell you this as well, mm -hmm. is that he was much more about leave him alone, he'll handle it himself, right. he's a big boy. I was the one that wanted to protect him and shelter him for all that. Right. So I think one of the things that Danny regrets is that he didn't get involved 
in a, a much more forceful way. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if uh, that's oftentimes a difference between uh, mothers and fathers it as act, well. Because absolutely most is. fathers would react, I think, in similar situations and mothers probably the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're uh, down to about the last minute, uh, two minutes here. Uh, Brendan, let me ask you a question. Did you get any sense, did uh, Daniel uh, talk to you about the incident that occurred on the day that he took his life? Uh, no, he told me that he was uh, beforehand, he talked about the kid and you know, he was just over it. And that's the last time I talked to him. Last, last thing I talked to Daniel, we were walking by to class, you know, we didn't go to the same class, but we walked past each other. Yeah. He asked me if I wanted to go to the beach that weekend. That's what's really insane like it was yeah. just a click of a button and it was just, he was gone something clicked in him did the incident ever come out was there a fight um yes. that we know about there was a fight between yes. him and another student yes anna let me ask you can you give the website to your uh, association if people want to get involved and how do you suggest they get involved yes it's a uh, www.napab n as in national a p as in people a B is in bullying, NAPAB.org. And, um, you know, please, any donations of any kind, mm -hmm. even a dollar, five dollars, anything will help. Mm -hmm. um, and we also need therapists, mm -hmm. we need business partners. That's all on the website. If they want to get involved, we absolutely need you. And last question, and I'm sorry for asking this um, How will you spend uh, the, the anniversary of his death coming in May? Every year in May, we have had a memorial for him, mm -hmm. and it's always been on the green belt where the boys, Brendan and Daniel and his friends, would play football. Um, and we've had different, we've had dub releases, balloon releases, and we really don't know what we're going to do this mm -hmm. year, but we will do something. All right. Very good. Thank you all for coming in. I really appreciate you spending time with us, and I'm sorry to even kind of relive this whole tragedy, but you're championing the cause um, and uh, I got to believe that this last hour has helped some people out there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, this is the Friendship Show. You've been listening to KX93.5 FM.